Okay, there. Here's the thing. There's part of it. I'll just step back here. There you go. The axe so big, no camera can contain it. Got my old shop hoodie on, so you know I mean business. Greetings fellow makers, welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill and today I'm gonna show you how I made this giant epic axe. This video is part one of a two part series on this build. And this axe isn't just any old axe. Around here, we're calling it the Jazza Axe. We teamed up with our pal Jazza over on the Draw With Jazza channel for this little project. This particular axe was designed by Jazza. In fact, he did a whole video showing how he designed this axe, which is a really great look into how you can design some of your own custom weapons. We'll have a link to that video down in the description. You should go watch it. It's really good. And also while you're there, just go ahead and subscribe to Jazza's channel. It's an amazing place to go to look for drawing tutorials. Also, he's a pretty cool guy. Anyway, for the build, I took the design that he put together, this thing right here, and I drew my own vector design blueprint so that I have a nice clean template. Then I got to work. Most of the parts on this axe were made from half inch thick PVC foam, also known as Sintra. I picked up my plastic from the local plastic store called Tap Plastics. Most of the axe parts were at least an inch thick, so I started by laminating two pieces of this PVC foam together with glue. Then I could trace out the part from my template and get to cutting it out. The bandsaw is a monster when it comes to cutting out this material. I cut out all of the exterior edges the best I could and then I used the disc sander to clean up my cuts. Next, I trimmed my template and traced out where the bevel would go for the edge of the blade. This was, again, roughed out on the bandsaw and then cleaned up the best I could on the oscillating spindle sander. For the light hole, I drilled a pilot hole, cut out the circle on the scroll saw, and then finish it up on the oscillating spindle sander. These circular bits on the axe here are for some LED lights. So I 3D modeled some sockets for my NeoPixel LED rings and I 3D printed those out. These parts were designed in two pieces, a socket that fit into the blade and a bezel that covered the seam between them. These were specifically designed to hold the NeoPixel rings. The bezels got a good bit of sanding to remove as much of the 3D print lines as I could. Then to secure the socket into the blade, I mixed up a batch of five minute epoxy, applied it liberally and stuck the two parts together. For the pommel, I also 3D printed a socket to connect it to a piece of PVC pipe that would serve as the lower handle. The two larger axe pieces, yes, these actually come apart into two pieces. Thanks for that, by the way, Jazza. These two larger pieces were also made from PVC foam. I roughed out the shapes on the bandsaw and then laminated each of those together to get an inch thick piece of material for both axe parts. Just like the pommel, the usual cut out on the bandsaw and cleaned up using the disc sander and my smaller one inch belt sander. Interior curves were cleaned up on the spindle sander. It really pays to have all of those powered sanding tools. To accommodate the battery and Arduino for the lights, I plotted out an area in the axe head to house the guts. The bandsaw made fast work of these cavities. Once the space was made, I could figure out where I needed to run wires for the power to the lights. Using my rotary tool, a rough trench was cut into the plastic surface just deep enough to run the wires. These wires could then be locked into place using hot glue. To cover those hideous looking wires, I cut another sheet of PVC foam, this time only an eighth of an inch thick. This was glued up and layered on either side of the ax to get everything to be symmetrical. Now these electronics aren't too complicated, but I'm still new to anything more sophisticated than say a couple of batteries and an LED. NeoPixel rings are super easy though, so I soldered in some wires for power, ground, and data. I twisted the wires together with my power drill to keep them all tidy. Once the NeoPixels were at home in their little 3D printed sockets, I soldered them to the wires that would connect them to the lights on the opposite side of the axe and also to connect them to the Arduino and power. Everything was secured with copious amounts of hot glue. Here's a little test of the lights with a laser cut piece of acrylic plastic to diffuse the light. It's so, so pretty. The larger parts of the axe got some buttons screwed into place before laminating everything together. These would serve as the power button. I put together a little board to house the battery holder and the Arduino. 
This was all soldered to the wires for the NeoPixels and the Switch. Sure enough, when I pushed the power button, the lights sprung to life. Also on the big axe, I ran some more wires down the handle to connect it with the lights in the pommel. Now to make these guys attach nice and securely, I wanted to use something other than the PVC foam. So I went with aluminum. These aluminum strips were an eighth of an inch thick and I cut them to length on the bandsaw and plotted out where the screw holes would need to go. I drilled and beveled those holes on the drill press and then I screwed them down to the spine of each of the axe halves. One half of the axe had screws added to it that protruded from the spine to make the male end of the connection. The other half had corresponding female keyholes machined into the aluminum strip. Now I use the term machined pretty loosely here. Basically, I drilled a couple of different size holes and then connected them using a cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool. These slots let me attach the two halves of the axe together with a simple sliding motion. All right, we're in the home stretch, just a couple more details to add. I rounded over the handle edges with my trim router and a round over bit. To add the round handle to the bigger axe, I used the bandsaw to do some creative modification to a PVC pipe. To make sure this would connect with some decent strength, a built a little bit of a weird connection bracket thing. All of these pieces were screwed and glued together and I'm actually pretty surprised at how strong of a bond it ended up creating. More pieces of PVC foam were glued to this weird connection and everything was sanded flush on the belt sander. I also made a little hand guard for more of that half inch PVC foam and glued that little rascal right into place. Any screw holes or gaps were filled in with Bondo and sanded flush. You didn't see anything. A coupler was glued to this PVC pipe so that I could connect it to the pommel piece. Next, I laser cut some of the surface detail parts from some thin styrene plastic. These were super glued in place wherever the design called for it. Then I 3D printed a little bezel and a little button cover to hide my functional power button. And finally, I used more of that eighth inch PVC foam and some magnets to make a handy little battery cover for the top of the ax blade. Everything got a rough sanding and then I hit it all with a filler primer to hide all my crimes. Once that was dry, I sanded it up to get it prepped for paint. And that's where we are right now. The axe parts are all done and I'm just getting it ready for paint, but that's gonna have to wait until the next video. So far, I'm pretty stoked about how this thing's going. The uh, aluminum work and some of this lighting stuff is a little bit of a challenge for me. So I'm happy to have sort of branched out and tried something new. Also, I was never given any indication as to how big this thing should be. So I kind of guessed big. Uh, and yeah, it's big, <laughs> it's gigantic. It comes up to here on me. Hey gang, thanks so much for checking out the video. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We have prop and costume making tutorials coming out every single week, usually two or sometimes three of them. And hey, I hope you got a chance to go watch Jazz's video on the design of this beast here. Of course, you should go over there and give him a subscription too. He does a whole bunch of really great drawing tutorial videos. He's even got some really good ones on designing weapons and armor. Everything else you need to know from us can be found over at punishedprops.com. We've got blueprints, we've got books in our store, our Patreon's linked over there, and all of our social media links, everything at punishedprops.com. If you have questions about this build, let me know in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to help out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the stunning conclusion of the Jazza Axe Saga. Mm-hmm.